It is now my pleasure to turn today's program over to Dewey Norwood. Dewey, the floor is yours. Hey, Rebecca, thanks a million for that kind introduction, and thanks for all of your great support here for what's going to be a very exciting call and the kickoff for our 2020 Beyond College webinar series. My name again is Dewey Norwood. Very fortunate to, to be on the lines with you all here for today and always excited to have an opportunity to, to spend some, some time with, with you all and bring back our series. And so, uh, you know, in just a minute we'll talk about some of our metrics and some of our numbers, but I, I know that every year we have folks that are joining for the first time, <laughs> and every year we have folks that are coming back year after year after year. And so whether you're a first-time guest or whether you've been with us for, my goodness, the fourth or fifth, sixth year that we've been doing these, we're appreciative of you, of you being on, and we hope that you're getting a lot of value from the content that we're sharing. The next slide is one that we have always liked to just spend a minute or so talking about, and then we'll talk briefly about our runner program right after. But we always love to talk a little bit about kind of our firm. What, what is Wells Fargo as an institution? What are we focused in on? And this is a great document that will give you some details relative to our vision, values, and, and the goal of our institution. So from a vision perspective, or vision perspective, you know, we want to make sure that we're satisfying customers' financial needs and helping them succeed financially. You'll see the values listed there. So whether it's doing what's right for the customer or high ethics or diversity and inclusion, all of those pieces uh, are, are very, very important, very, very important pieces. Relative to our goals, you'll see the areas that we're focusing in on, again, around customer service and advice, team member engagement, of course, innovation, risk management, corporate citizenship, and also shareholder values. So these are all things that are very, very important to us here at Wells Fargo. And we feel that these are things that are, you know, important for us to, to share with our local communities. And this is the reason, personally, I like doing events like these because I see it as an extension of our vision and our values. I want to talk a little bit on the next slide about our run of programs, so kind of what, what we're going to be lining up here for today. You know, from my numbers perspective, we always love to share this, this data point. Scholars, you've outdone yourselves again. We have a total of 101 of you all. <laughs> who have actually joined here for, for today's webinar. And we are just always excited whenever we have uh, great participation numbers. And so thank you so much for being able to, to join from that side. We also love to kind of share who uh, keeps score a little bit, right? Who's actually done the most registrations from our national partners and even the states that are, that are, that are the highest represented here. Uh, and at the same time, we've also launched a poll here that you guys can go ahead and fill out for us to let us know how many folks are, are in your viewing area there with you today. But I want to give you just a few metrics here. So uh, from a referral perspective, I want to congratulate the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, or TMCF, uh, for being the number one recruiter. <laughs> We're sending folks here today. It's called the top referral source. HSF was in second place this time around, but TMCF, you guys win five gold stars there for sending the most folks to the call. Want to recognize the university that had the most. So uh, the University of North Carolina at Charlotte actually had the highest number of registrants here for today. So UNC Charlotte 49ers, congratulations to you all on being able to have the most, uh, to having the most individuals actually come to, uh, to the call here from your university today. And then the top state, uh, interestingly, was the state of North Carolina as well. Sometimes it's California. Uh, that wins, but actually this time North Carolina, you guys came in right ahead uh, with the top number of registrations there. So congratulations. Relative to what to expect, you're going to leave this call today with resources to help you be a better partner with your current mentor and or sponsor, or give you resources to actually help you leverage that relationship as you're working to build one out. So we promise that we'll give you resources today that are going to make that journey a little bit easier for you. We do want to remind you also from a housekeeping perspective that you can submit questions to us. One question that we get all of the time is, will, the, will we be accessing the playback or will playback be available? Absolutely. And at that point, you'll have access to the slides and can review the information. So know that information will be coming a couple of days after the call. Uh, but you can also submit questions confidentially. We have our HR leaders on. They're able to answer those questions real time. And we always keep those confidential. So we're not going to say your name if you ask a question but we will be able to, 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 uh, to present it. And remember, if it's a question that's top of mind for you, it's probably something that's important to other folks. From a programming perspective, you'll see some of the topics here that, that our great partners will be presenting on. So what's the difference between a mentor and a sponsor? You know, setting yourself up for success, um, 
all of those pieces there. You know, why do you need a mentor? Why do you need a sponsor? Why is that important? Um, how do you engage in the appropriate way? What does engagement mean when you're reaching out to someone that's maybe really senior or someone that you've admired that you would like to have join you or support you from a mentor perspective? So those pieces will, will all be there. And then, of course, we'll talk about the roadmap, defining a mentor, and also reimagining uh, your career development. So we'll touch on some elements around that as well. The final reminders here uh, around things. Just remember that you can still access all of our 2019 webinars. All these webinars are available for up to a year after the broadcast, so you can actually get all of those pieces uh, and access the playback of those at any time, kind of as you deem appropriate. So just remember that all of those are there and they're readily available for you as you'd like to review any of the content from 2019. At the end of the call, we'll talk for a moment or so about our webinar schedule. And we'll also launch our survey so you can give us some in-the-moment feedback relative to what you've received, and then also we'll give you a few details relative to, to playback and things along those lines. And then the final piece, you know, this is one we always pitch. We love for you to get social with us. <laughs> so if you're utilizing social media, please go ahead and use the hashtag WFC Beyond College. Again, WFC Beyond College. And give us your feedback, share comments as you're tweeting out or uh, posting or sharing. Go ahead and use that hashtag and, and share the information from there. Final reminder before we do a quick introduction of our, of our great two panelists today, remember, few questions make these calls go and make these webinars great. Submit your questions. I guarantee you if it's a question for you, there's probably a question that someone else has out there that's similar to what you're asking. So present those questions, and our team of experts will be happy to address those as quickly as we can throughout the course of today's meeting. All right, with that said, I want to turn the reins over to our wonderful, wonderful partners, uh, Ms. Ruth Amanderes uh, and Ms. Ms. Uh, Katie Braven. They are great, great partners of ours and work in our talent acquisition and also our campus recruiting world. And so scholars, candidly, they are connecting in with folks like you all on a daily basis, and they're providing you with insight and guidance. Uh, to help you relative to your careers. And so Ruth and Katie, we're excited to have you all back on today for another command performance. We're, we're always glad to have you all on the lines. I want to turn the reins over to you for today's presentation, and we'll give you the reins from here. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, we are very excited to be on the call today. I know I can tell you, um, kind of as we kind of get ready for the kickoff of 2020, this is an exciting topic because I think both Katie and I can talk about not only both being mentees but being mentors ourselves. So we're going to start off and kind of get an idea from you guys who has had a mentor in the past or has leveraged one in the past. So we'll kick it off with a polling question. So, Rebecca, if you can launch the poll We'd like to find out from you guys how many of you have had a mentor or leveraged a mentor or sponsor. So as the poll is going out, I want you guys to think about, and it could be, you know, maybe you're not quite sure what a mentor is or the difference between a mentor and sponsor, and that's quite all right. On today's call, we'll learn about that. But I want to find out how many of you have, um, have actually leveraged and really um, – been able to find a really strong mentor or, um, or would like to identify one in the future. So, Rebecca, if we can close the poll, let's see what our poll response is. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is so good. the overwhelming so, number of responses say they have both a mentor and a sponsor. That's just, that's surprising. Surprising. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Um, they, this is not only not only surprising, but it's actually a nice surprise because as you think of your development, um, mentors and sponsors are vital. Um, and I hope that Katie and I can share some tips on maybe leveraging that mentorship into the next steps, or some of you who are maybe are a mentee maybe take yourselves to the next step where you'll become a mentor. So this is really good information. So let's kick it off, and I'll hand it over to Katie. Thank you so much, Ruth. 
Wow, what an engaged uh, audience, and you're certainly ahead of the curve in terms of having a mentor, having a sponsor, and we're hoping that we can really help you add value to those relationships uh, through our agenda today, of which Dewey really did a great job of touching on some of the things that we're going to be um, trying to hit on so that you can have some takeaways, maybe some conversation starters in which to bring back to your mentor or your sponsor and have an even more robust conversation that you may already be having. So we're going to talk about um, a sponsor versus a mentor. We're going to go through a spectrum of relationships, um, how you set yourself up for success, the engagement process and the attraction process of sponsors and mentors. Um, we're going to have uh, a roadmap that you can really walk yourself through. Um, maybe if you do have a sponsor or a mentor now, are you getting the most out of that relationship or how can we maximize that? Um, in addition, as a mentor myself, um, sometimes I look for new and different mentors in addition to the one relationship I already have, so we can talk through that as well. And then reimagining your development, um, whether that's planning agendas, relationships, we want to talk about that. And then Ruth is going to leave us with um, talking through the law of connection. So we've got a really exciting afternoon planned in terms of our discussion today. We do want to make it as interactive as possible. You've noticed that we're a fan of pulling. And we're going to pull you again one more time before we launch into this next piece here. So I'm going to share that with you next. And if you don't mind, uh, Rebecca launching that for us as well. So what is the most important part of your growth and development? And an emphasis on most important here, right? We can only select one of these, it looks like. So most important, right? The most important one. That's right. Whether it's experience, relationships, feedback, mm -hmm. uh, coursework, you're definitely going to see these themes come up as we have a discussion here today. So, um, awesome. Rebecca, what most folks selected? Let's close our poll and um, see what they say. Wow. Again, we've got um, a, a quorum yet again at 100% for wow. relationship <laughs> feedback. So um, you all continue Ooh. to blow us away with your, uh, <laughs> your answers here. I'm very, very engaged and surprised by that, but I really appreciate that um, that's where you're leaning towards. That's definitely the culture in terms of when we think about a mentor and a sponsor, it's very heavily relationship-based, and we hope that we can share more today about pulling in your experiences, pulling in coursework, again, to maximize that relationship. So um, let's move on here to the difference between a mentor versus a sponsor. So mentorship is really talking with you. And I'm going to come back to that um, as we talk about sponsorship as well. But mentorship is talking with you. So mentors are there to listen, to share knowledge, provide advice and support, and also give feedback. It's a relationship between two people for the purpose and a very defined purpose of developing themselves or their careers and navigating the workplace. Um, some of you on the call may be new to the workplace. Maybe you're a couple years into your career, um, and you really haven't maximized, again, that relationship with your mentor. But we want to make sure that you know the difference between what a mentor's role is and the sponsor's role is. I took some time earlier this week to listen to a couple of TED Talks about mentorship. And one that I listened to about the daughter of an NBA legend, Karen Russell, um, she shared her definition of mentorship, which really stood out to me, as a relationship that helps you find your highest and best use. Let me say that again. It's a relationship that helps you find your highest and best use. And that really struck me because I thought, you know, we really want to be looking at how we optimize our skill sets, 
and how we grow and develop. You know, here at Wells Fargo, and Dewey did a great job of really introducing the vision and values of our firm, one of which is really emphasized as people are a competitive advantage here at Wells Fargo. We strive to attract, develop, motivate, and retain the best team members in order to serve our customers in the best way that we can. And a piece of that statement is really critical is the development part. And that's where we can really highlight that mentorship aspect. So as we look also at the comparison between a sponsor, a sponsor is someone who's talking about you. So remember, mentorship is talking with you, and sponsorship is talking about you. So a sponsor is someone who's going to advocate for you about your advancement, about your promotion. The sponsor really provides a voice of support to help accelerate you as a team member in your career through advancing assignments, key lateral moves, or promotions. Essentially, they're going to be the person in the room talking about you, advocating for you when you're not actually in the room. Sponsors really have an inherent degree of accountability for the success of you advancing in roles, meaning they're willing to stick their neck out on the line saying this person is somebody that we should be talking about, somebody that we should be taking a look at, and somebody that we can trust that is ready to be taking on their next move in their advancement of their career. So I know there's an old saying that, you know, it's about who you know, not what you know, and I'm here to tell you it's about both because you can't get a sponsor without really knowing your stuff, but you also need to know your stuff to get a sponsor who's going to go into the room and talk about you. So I think that's really, really important to know the difference between those two things. And also, down here in the big gray box, a mentoring partnership could turn into a sponsor relationship over time, but should not be expected from the beginning. So I think your goal is really to create a relationship and an environment with a mentor where you are getting that support, you are getting that advice, but not necessarily expecting them to go talk about you all over town. That's where your sponsor comes um, into play. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the difference between those two folks. Moving on, we have a conversation really about spectrum of your relationship and how this spectrum really plays into you building your sphere of influence, you identifying people in your network, and at the very bottom is really the pendulum of the level of personal investment for building that relationship. So as we walk through this, we can see that networking is really an activity designed for you to interact with other people, probably at a larger level than just one-on-one. -on -one. So you're developing contacts, you're giving an exchange of information, and your goal is really, again, to draw people into your network that, who knows, could eventually become a mentor, but right now you're just information gathering. The next is your learning network. So individuals that are together for a purpose, and maybe they're sharing knowledge or experiences that talk to your potential expertise. So I'm in HR, maybe I go to a, a learning network about HR where I can share with other individuals that happen to be in my sphere as well. Then coaching. So again, you're in a conversation where the coach, and think about it as a team. So you've got a team of people really looking at an expert who's gonna be giving them and asking them questions and giving observations that can help you to improve to the next step, but not necessarily taking you by the hand and walking you through that. That's really what we look at for that next step of mentoring. That's what we just talked about with someone who's going to be in that position of feedback and advice specific to you. Because for each of these activities that you're seeing in the spectrum of relationships, there's a purpose and a focus and you should know going into each one what the goal is really defined as. So as you see in that second box labeled focus, that's what you should be looking at when you think through the mentorship process, the sponsorship process, as well as just building your interaction with people at the very beginning of your career all the way through the end, because you're definitely going to have um, a need and a necessity in order to 
meet people who can carry you through, give you more experiences, and give you more examples of what to do when you navigate your career. So again, you can meet your mentor at a networking event or an interaction with a coach or a learning opportunity, but just know that the um, definition of each of these really has a purpose and a level of personal investment in each of those relationships. Ruth, anything to add there? So I completely agree, Katie. And, and as we, um, you know, go through one of the questions that popped up as you were presenting, one of the questions was, you know, for a sponsor, is it a formal process? Do I need to formally ask someone to be my sponsor? And, and I will tell you that response um, or the advice I would give someone is it's kind of a twofold. Yes, certainly seek out sponsors, but typically that, that relationship becomes organic because, as you are performing in your career and you are building your personal brand, you will see that other managers, other leaders, even your peers will be your sponsors and advocates because they see how you demonstrate and come in, into work and, and basically you know, how you play, right? So when you are, are doing that, that becomes an organic, almost like an organic ask. But one of the key things to think about when you're thinking about a sponsor if you're going to ask a sponsor, a really great opportunity um, to kind of start that uh, conversation when you do ask for a sponsor. If someone's giving you great feedback or maybe they, they, uh, they're mentioning they saw something that you did great on, on a presentation or really are um, grateful for maybe something that you helped with, you know, let them know and say, oh, thanks so much for giving me that feedback. You know, you know, if you want to shoot my manager a message, you know, I'd love for you to advocate for me. I'd love to learn more. Those are kind of the organic opportunities for you to start a conversation for a sponsor. So it can become organic or you can actually make a formal ask. Great. Thank you so much for addressing that. Moving on, um, we really want to make sure that we are setting ourselves up for success. And as we know, um, based on the poll, each of you seem to already have some kind of level of mentoring or sponsorship. Um, but I want to go back to maybe some of the folks that haven't yet started that relationship or maybe want to enhance the relationship that they have. So going into this opportunity, you really need to ask yourself what you're trying to achieve. And I think that that really starts with understanding who you are and being really honest about yourself and being able to answer questions to yourself about your strengths, about your weaknesses, being able to describe yourself, your passions, your interests, your accomplishments in a clear way in order to really approach your mentor in a way that's very pointed. And maybe that's one of the things that you need assistance with when you talk to a mentor is really how to establish yourself, your brand, how to better represent what your strengths are, what you're trying to look for in terms of advancement, or some of the things that you're trying to develop in. So I think that's a really, really big part of approaching mentorship and sponsorship is just being honest with who you are and what you're hoping to gain out of your experiences, being able to identify the results that you've achieved, and again, getting that image and brand across. And it really starts with identifying, you know, how do I approach someone and where do I start? So is it um, a relationship like a manager or a peer or community leader or someone like that that you would feel comfortable with being your mentor? Or do you want to challenge yourself and get out of your um, kind of mirrored image, if you will, someone that's just like you, that's got a lot of the same traits as you, but at a higher level? Um, or do you want somebody that's totally different, that would give you a completely different um, experience? For example, you know, I have, I, as a female in this industry, I would really like to see, um, you know, having a male mentor um, to help advocate and just have a different perspective on experience. So now that we've talked through a lot about the mentorship and sponsorship aspect, um, we've launched another poll. Um, like we said, we love the interaction. So tell us if you are very clear about why you need a mentor or a sponsor. Um, strongly agree, disagree, agree, or strongly agree. 
I'm sorry, strongly disagree, disagree, um, agree, or strongly agree. So we can go ahead and um, close that poll and see what folks think. So continue to sing. Oh, go ahead, Dewey. I was going to say, this is where you need the fun, the fun game show music while we're waiting for the, uh, <laughs> for the final results to display here. And it has just closed. So we've got wow. three agree. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of agrees and a lot of strongly agrees. <laughs> That's great. I'm surprised that the 100% um, quorum broke, but I appreciate that <laughs> very much. Uh, Too funny. And I, Too funny. <laughs> it's always so important, um, you know, as we talk at you today a little bit about some of these um, tips that we're, we're talking through and how to engage. We also want to bring some levity about our own personal experiences. And I know Ruth has experience regarding mentorship, mentee, mentor. I'd love for you, Ruth, to share that experience with us if you could. Absolutely. So early on in my career, I um, you know, had the opportunity to meet a mentor who still is one of my mentors. Um, and I got very lucky. But as her schedule got busy, I realized I needed to kind of build my network and, and kind of find other um, mentors. And, you know, I kind of made the rookie mistake of one mentor and a successful mentorship does not necessarily mean you're always going to have a successful mentor-mentee relationship because mentors have different ways of, you know, coaching and, um, you know, kind of, you know, preparing you. Someone might have an approach where they're very detail-oriented, so they're going to kind of walk you through um, and, and maybe handhold you, I'll use that term. And then you might have someone else who, you know, says, you know, hey, well, what do you want to work on? You know, you come prepared to the meeting. So you want to understand that every mentor-mentee relationship is very different. So you're going to want to make sure, Katie, Katie you know, spoke to, you know, kind of, you know, making sure that you understand what you're looking for from that mentorship and being candid. So as I started out in my career, I've had different mentors and different relationships where I have been able to um, really kind of grow from their different experiences. So I would definitely encourage you guys, as you think about your mentorships and who you want your mentors to be, is look for different ones. You don't always have to have just one mentor. Um, I, ironically, you will find that you get different perspectives, neither right or wrong, but make you pause and think, and you realize you know, a lot of people within teams, they think, think differently. So it helps you see things from different views. Thank you, Ruth. That's wonderful. Um, so much of what we're saying, we really want to um, sum up about being a great mentee um, to the mentor as well and really find your quote-unquote sweet spot when engaging mentors and attracting sponsors. Um, so, you know, what are my skills? Again, what and where is the need? And what are my passions? And I think it's great to flip those as well with your mentor to ask them those same questions about themselves so that you can really understand where maybe some of your um, similarities lie and where some of your differences lie so that you can leverage that in your conversation as well. Um, seek experiences that align with those sweet spots. So um, strengths on top of strengths. We do something called Strength Finders here at Wells Fargo that really highlight the top five characteristics about yourself that you're great at. Um, and then we seek out opportunities for you to get even better at those. So leveraging experiences to build new and diverse relationships, much like what Ruth was talking about in terms of seeking people out who are maybe not the same background as yourself, and that can mean many different things, um, whether it's male-female, whether it's um, different levels of the organization, junior to senior, or maybe it's just a completely different line of business, you know, from HR to um, risk and compliance or our wholesale lending banking group. Um, those could be great leverages to go across lines so that you can learn a little bit about those backgrounds as well. So be intentional about those leverages 
and those courses to really expand your knowledge and your expertise so that you can partner and work together, um, certainly setting expectations with one another, making sure that as you're approaching folks to be a mentor, um, that they have the capacity to do so. So I'll use the example of our very own Dewey Norwood, a very engaging individual, has got a lot of passion around a lot of experience with Wells Fargo. He may have, you know, five people that he's mentoring right now, and although you would love to have him in your corner as well as a mentor, maybe he just can't give you the time and attention that you would want as a mentee. So maybe Dewey could recommend someone else who he's come into contact with that he could introduce you to um, to become a mentor. So just be aware that it's a time commitment because we want it to be a great experience. And I think that that's a good way also to engage with mentors and attract sponsors. Um, that's one of the things that you all just asked in the first question that we read is, you know, should we ask our sponsor to be our sponsor? And I think the answer to that is absolutely yes. So if someone has had a great experience with you, it's almost like, you know, um, to make a, a reference to a, you know, a sale or a, a customer service experience that you've had that's great. It's like, would you mind recommending me the next time you hear of a great opportunity that comes up? And that sponsor can certainly be comfortable with that in saying, absolutely, I would love to advocate for you when I'm in the room and you're not there. So keep that in mind. All right, moving on with um, Ruth and the roadmap. Absolutely. So before I jump into the roadmap, I'll, I'll uh, answer a question that came through the Q&A, which is actually a really good question. You know, I had a mentor, and I, all of you said you've had a mentor, um, but they're not returning my calls. Did I do something wrong? So I want to talk about uh, um, a little bit about how you approach that roadmap because you can, um, you know, kind of lose that communication if you didn't come up with a plan in your roadmap on kind of finding that mentor, establishing the relationship, and um, you know, also agreeing to what your timeline is going to be and what your goals are going to be. So it's a really good question. So when you are thinking of the, the mentor and sponsor, as Katie mentioned, you want to seek out different opportunities. But what you want to think about is also think about, you know, it doesn't have to be internal. It doesn't have to be somebody that works within your, your direct group, your organization. It could be someone from another company, maybe a training class that you took, somewhere where you know, um, gosh, you know, great speaker, and you think, God, that, that's somebody that I really want to emulate and learn from, you can definitely make sure that you ask. Now, when you are asking, you want to make sure that you always know in advance what your ask is. Because just asking someone to be your mentor, um, you know, quite frankly, the person might say, well, gosh, you know, I've got a really busy schedule. But if you're purposeful and specific on what you're looking to work on, you know, for example, I might say, gosh, I, I really want to work on my technical skills, and I know that, you know, this particular person is great on SharePoint or great with presentations. Um, I may approach that person and say, you know, I'm really looking to develop my technical skills, and I'd like to see if I could work with you and have you mentor me and work on that. Mentorship doesn't have to necessarily be so that I can, you know, be a better public speaker. It could just be that you're working on a particular skill set. That person might say, okay, yeah, I can share that expertise. This person is looking to focus in that one area where I can help. Or maybe that person might be like, gosh, you know, I, I, maybe you think I'm an expert. I'm really not. I'm also challenged in that area, but I have a peer who could certainly help you. He's an expert on SharePoint or you know, this person could be that person. So make sure that when you do ask for that mentorship that you know why you're, you're uh, asking and you make it clear to that person. Because sometimes that person may say no to you because they're not quite sure, you know, if they do, um, you know, have that value to kind of help you in your career. But if you're specific enough and intentional, you can. Now, when you do find that mentor, in establishing that, that relationship, you're going to come to an agreement of, you know, what does your schedule look like? You know, wh how often are you available to meet with me? You know, make sure that you understand that. If you get to the point that you have agreed on a schedule and maybe your mentor is not returning your calls, it could be that their, their schedule has gotten really, really tight. And unfortunately, you know, they, they have not had time to, to meet with you. 
you know, be courteous, send them a note, let them know that you understand their time is value, um, but you want to make sure you double check with them. It could just be that, you know, for some reason that meeting fell off their calendar, they didn't realize it, um, but be sure that you take the initiative to follow up. And then also realize that, you know, you, some relationships do run their course and you may, you may need to find a different mentor. So that's your opportunity to pivot and, and you know, kind of shift. And in that case, you might ask that person, you know, I know that your, your schedule has uh, really uh, filled up and you are at capacity. Do you have any recommendations to someone else that I could then reach out to? That person might connect you to someone else that would be a great mentor to you. So make sure that you know what your ask is and, you know, be, be sure that you're professional in your communication and that you're open to the fact that things will change. One of the things that you want to know, uh, want to make sure that you do, and this will actually help build your business acumen and actually set you up for success, is that the mentor program or, or mentorship um, approach is a bit of a homework, okay? It's not easy. As you're developing your, your professional growth, that's not an easy road, right? There's things that you're learning. There's things you're going to, you know, lessons learned. But as you are determining who is the right person to approach to be your mentor, you need to do your business acumen. You need to, you know, find out who are these individuals on certain teams. Who are those presenters that, you know, you, you hear about are doing great work. Or maybe you ask your manager to introduce you to a few people. And as they introduce you, you need to do your research on those key players because when you, you know, start your first conversation with them, you should not go to your mentor to help them tell you about them. You should go to your mentor with, here's what I've learned, here's what I've heard you present, and here's what I'd like to have you help me with. So not, that not only shows that you've done your homework, but that you're purposeful in what you're asking in that conversation. You want to make sure you're constantly soliciting feedback. If you have not found a mentor or maybe you're struggling to find a different mentor, be open to the fact that you, um, you're going to receive some feedback. So when you ask, you know, sometimes we don't want to hear the feedback, but you need to make sure that you, you know the feedback's coming. So just make sure that you're open to receiving the feedback, pausing and saying, okay, here's what I need to change, and then making sure that you use that feedback to engage in that next conversation. We want to make sure that you kind of don't give up on the mentor uh, relationship. If you do hit a stumbling block, know that that's not uncommon because people's schedules change. And sometimes it could be where maybe there's some miscommunication. That's an opportunity for you to, to uh, you know, pivot. But we want you to know that if one relationship does not, is not successful, you should not give up in finding another uh, mentor. You want to search high and low because mentors and sponsors are a key piece of your professional development. And no matter where you are in your uh, career, whether you're in, you know, entry level, five years, ten years in, or even, you know, ten years plus, there will always be a situation where you are either mentoring someone or being asked uh, or asking someone to be your mentee or mentor. And also, you will eventually become in, be, be in a position where you can sponsor and give back to others, right? So you know and you'll remember where you were early on in your career and go, okay, you know, early on in my career, I needed someone to, you know, to advocate for me in those meetings when I wasn't in there. You know, who are the star players? Who can I do that? So you're going to pay it forward. So you want to make sure that you don't give up on that relationship, look high and low. Don't always focus on just the senior leaders. I have found great mentors through peers. Sometimes it could be a peer that, you know, just quite frankly has a way of, being very charismatic, I, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Katie as an example. Katie's very charismatic in front of a, an audience. Now, I've, I've used her and said, okay, hey, I really need you to run this icebreaker because I know you're going to make this fun and interactive. Um, and the things that I learned from just observing my peers are things that I could – maybe I'm not as natural as Katie in that next presentation, but I can take away some of those things that I and observe, right? So you want to make sure that you don't think – well, my mentor needs to be at an executive level. Your mentors could be your peers because you're taking away kind of all the best pieces of everyone in that room. So I hope that helps. We're going to push a poll. Um, and in this poll, I want you guys to think about, are you clear? Am I clear about how a mentor and a ment uh, sponsor can support me in achieving my goals? 
Do you strongly disagree? Do you disagree? Do you agree or strongly agree? All right. Let's go ahead and close the poll. It's been up for just a little bit um, and see what those results are. So coming in. All right, we're splitting down even further. We've got 42.9% agreeing and 57.1% um, strongly agreeing. So that is wonderful to see. Moving forward here, um, we, we talked a little bit um, about the roadmap for initial conversations. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. I think I'm going to uh, come back to this one, but I think it's really helpful um, to look at this reimagining your development, to really think through this as a document that you can bring with you, that you can use as a jumping off point to start conversations. I think when I was first entering into a mentor-mentee relationship, I was just asking myself, okay, how do I ask the right questions so that I come out of this conversation really having a direction in which to go? And how can this person really help glean some experience that I don't have as a, a seasoned professional? So I know at the very beginning of this call today, we asked, you know, do you think most importantly experiences count, relationships and feedback, or programs and courses? And it was 100% across the board that relationships and feedback were what you found to be most important as you were having this mentor relationship. And I think that's a great place to start as well because as I'm looking at questions I can bring into the conversation to my mentor, maybe I jot down that, you know, I'd really love to give um, or get some feedback from a peer on my performance. But I've never done that before. So maybe the topic of the conversation with my mentor this time is how do I go about doing that? And so I can use that peer feedback in the very middle of this document to really start that conversation. So I circle that one, I jot down a few notes about what I want to ask, and I bring that in with me to my next mentor encounter. Same thing if I want some leader feedback. So, you know, I get feedback, you know, on one-on-ones or I have a mid-year and an end-year review, but I'm really looking for my leader to talk to me more about X, Y, Z, whatever that may be. Maybe it's, you know, leading a meeting or something like that where I can get some direct feedback on the work that I'm outputting. How do I have those conversations that might be different from what we'll cover in you know, our weekly or biweekly conversation about just what I'm working on. So I think this document is really, really important to bring in. Some other things that I might ask and pull from this document would be, I'd like to volunteer in the community, but I just moved here to take on this new job and I'm not familiar with the community um, and I'm not connected with an organization. I know you're really involved in organization XYZ. How did that come to be? So asking really thoughtful questions to be able to have conversations that will give you some actionable items. That way the next time you go in and talk to your mentor, you can call back and say, listen, you know, I took your advice from our last conversation and I approached Ruth and said, you know, I'd really like some feedback on how we interacted on that mentorship presentation that we gave last week. And she said X, Y, Z we had a great dialogue, or here are some of the things that she said I should work on, and it was a very open dialogue. Same thing with the community involvement. You know, you told me you were involved in this because you are passionate about, let's say it was animals. You know, I'm passionate about helping children. So I went to the library and did X, Y, Z to get enrolled in a particular, um, you know, give back program to local schools. So there's a lot of things that you can build on from this document whether it's finding out how to get it involved or find out about special projects on your team, like how do I get myself in the loop of knowing what's going on? This document is so, so helpful for me um, that I've really brought this into those conversations time and time again because the categories, as you see, are not only endless, but they spark new conversations and they let you come back and report back to your mentor so that everyone knows that you're moving forward. 
Um, so that's just kind of an example. I thought it was a little bit more helpful than maybe just kind of going through what some of these pieces look like. But um, Ruth, anything to add or any questions that may come to the top of your brain when you look at this document? No, I think you hit it right on. You know, being prepared and kind of bringing those topics in, into a conversation are invaluable. Great. Wonderful. So just some reminders for you as we start to wrap up here today. Um, again, it's a relationship that takes time to build. And the bottom line is we not only want you to be a great mentee, but we want your mentor to feel like there's value being added to both sides of the coin. So don't forget to respect the time that the mentor is taking to sit with you and give you this advice, much like Ruth was saying. Things come up. We understand that. We want to be flexible, but we also want to stress that this is an important relationship. And so if we can take the time out for one another, we're both going to be greatly impacted. Come prepared with questions or a goal in mind for each conversation. And make sure that there's follow-up from your last conversation. We're not just having conversations to throw them by the wayside. We really want them to be actionable. We want you to put this advice and support into your day-to-day -day activities so that you can learn and grow. The other thing that I want to be stressing is be coachable. You know, be willing to hear feedback. I think a lot of times it's very easy for us to hear about what we're doing well, um, getting advice on maybe what we could do better, but even being open to some criticism. You know, maybe the conversation with your peer didn't go that well, and you have a whole new perspective about what you might need to change. You know, talking to your mentor about, man, that was really uncomfortable. You know, how do I get better at this? Or how do I follow back up with my peer so that we can have a better working relationship? There are so many times when we just need to be open and willing to hear that, that we can really gain a different perspective on two things, where you're at now in your career and having a realistic understanding of that, and number two, what's possible on where you could go in the future. So just keep in mind that, you know, be willing to put in the work and knowing that this is really a value add on both sides of the relationship. Ruth, let's talk about the law of connection. Absolutely. So if you guys pull up the last slide, in this particular quote, um, you know, the interesting thing is as you think about, um, this is a quote from John Maxwell, and it says, it's one thing to communicate with people because you believe you have something of value to say. It's another to communicate with people because you believe they have value. And here's where I'm going to kind of flip it for you guys just a little bit. You know, as you work on your development and you seek out mentors, um, you know, you, you, I think as, as we all start in our careers, we think, okay, I'm looking for someone that's going to add value to me. Um, what I want you guys to really think about is as you build on that, it becomes a two-way street. So it's not just about reaching out to individuals and communicating with those that you think are going to add value, but kind of pause and, and you know, think, where am I adding value? How can I re, uh, you know, enrich this relationship? That will not only make your relationship stronger with your mentor, but quite honestly, is going to be kind of one of those lessons learned that's invaluable throughout your entire career. So approach it not just only as, you know, I'm going to seek out those that add value. It's I'm going to seek out those that add value, and I'm also going to add value to their development as well. We have some really great questions that came through the Q&A, and I think, um, you know, one of them is, you know, was how do I reward a, a sponsor, you know, or a mentor? and say thank you because they've helped me along the way. Um, and, and, and just in adding value to that relationship, believe me, you are saying thank you. Uh, and a thank you does not have to be a monetary thank you. It could be, you know, by, you know, just giving them kudos and actually letting their manager know. Um, because just as they, you know, um, let your manager know of your development, that helps them as well. So sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's being there. You know, suddenly you become their sponsors and, and, and kind of help spread their, their brand by, you know, letting others know of the work that that individual is doing. That's a great way to say thank you. Um, and sometimes it's just a simple thank you note. I will tell you, that goes a long way. It does not have to be monetary. Another good question that came through was, 
you know, I had a mentor who helped me get my internship as I started off in my career. Um, and it was really a great, great uh, relationship. That person really helped me out. I now have someone who is interested in internships. Should I refer them to that individual? Um, here's the funny part. That person helped you so that now you can help. So sometimes we think, okay, you know, um, you know, Katie was the right person that helped me. I'm going to send everybody to Katie. Well, Katie, you know, helped you by giving you the resources. And now you have the knowledge. So you pay it back and you pay it forward by helping that other. So we want to encourage be a relationship where as you learn new skills and you learn new resources, you are now sharing them with others that come to you asking about, you know, a mentor or a connection. You want to make sure that you do that. One of, an, one of the other questions that came in through is, um, should I seek out a mentor that's the same gender? Um, what safeguards should I have in place if they're the opposite sex? So, you know, Katie kind of mentioned that, right? We, we, we tend to gravitate to somebody that we're comfortable with, and you should not. You know, sometimes, sometimes as a female, you might think, well, I need to reach out to other strong leaders in, in, the, uh, in the firm that are females that I want to emulate and be like. Sometimes it's about, you know, looking at who's that expert, right? It may be, you know, um, you know I'm, I'm a, a Latino woman, and I may think, well, guess what? Maybe I'm looking for, you know, a really strong, um, diverse uh, individual that is male. Um, and maybe they're not diverse in, in ethnicity. Maybe they're just diverse in their work experience. So, you, you know, really think outside the box. Think about the skills that you're gaining. And the safeguards are, you know, really, you know, you're, it's a professional relationship. So, you know, always meet in a professional environment. You know, make sure that it's a meeting. You know, it's in an area where you're comfortable. Um, obviously, we never want anyone to feel like that relationship is going south. And if it is, make sure you step yourself out and quickly, you know, say, you know, I, you don't necessarily have to address it and say, I'm comfortable with the situation, but just say, you know, thank you so much. I think I'm going to, um, you know, have to reschedule this. And maybe at that point, have a, that, that turns into a different conversation. But, you know, my, my recommendation advice to you is always meet in a professional environment at work. Um, you know, if you're meeting, you know, downstairs in the, in the lobby for a coffee, it's an open public area, make sure that it's, it's an area where you feel comfortable. Um, so you can have very quick, easy safeguards for that. And I, ironically, yes, and now that we, live in a, we work in a virtual environment, a lot of your relationships are going to be virtual anyway. <laughs> Can you go ahead? I would definitely say in terms of um, seeking a mentor that is um, or is not your same gender, go back to the, the goal of what are you hoping to get out of this relationship. Do you want to um, get to the same place that this person is at? Um, does the gender play a role in that? Um, go back to those original questions of why you started out and we're looking for a mentor in the first place, um, which really leads us to our next question, which is um, they pick a sponsor, you pick a sponsor, what have you. How do I make the person I want to pick pick me? Um, and that's a really good question because I think it all relies on you approaching that person to say, listen, you know, I think that um, you would be a great mentor for me for these reasons. Do you have the capacity to take me on as a mentor? Again, we're being respectful of that person's time um, to say, hey, you know, I think we'd be a great match. I'd love to learn from your experience and get your advice, but I also understand that you're very busy, you have a passionate career, and if you have the time, would you be willing to spend that time with me? And I think that doesn't put them in a, a bad place where they can literally look at their calendar and say, yes, I've got this time capacity, or hey, I can give you a half an hour each week, or I can give you two meetings a month um, and have that compromise. Because, you know, who knows what's on their plate, but that's how you really get them to pick you, is being flexible and respect, respecting their time that they're willing to give you. Um, I think in terms of uh, the last question, which we kind of touched on a little bit here, is I was assigned a mentor. We don't get along. How do I gracefully bow out? I don't want them to feel bad. And I think my approach to that 
would be really just thanking them so much for their time that they have spent with you and just sharing with them that you feel like at this point um, you'd like to get some other perspectives and maybe bring a new mentor onto your team because that's essentially what you're doing. You're creating a team of folks that can help you in your development and um, there are people in your life for a reason and there are people in your life for a season. And that could just be one of those times when you've met, uh, made all of the, the time with that person and now that time has expired. All you want to do is thank them so much for your time and move on. So we've got some great resources for you here up on the screen that we've had up as we answered those questions. We greatly want to thank you for your time here today. Um, we do have a couple reminders, so I'll give the floor back to Dewey to go ahead and wrap us up. So thanks so, so much, both Ruth and I. Yeah, Katie, thank you. Ruth, thank you all. Some great, great information there and some takeaways that I have. And I'm going to get a lot of themes out of that. It needs to be natural. You have a role in it. The mentor has a role in it. Candidly, the sponsors may have roles that you never know until a later date and time. But there are ways to thank individuals for any support that they provided for you. So I want to begin by thanking you all for another great, great presentation. And I've decided I'm going to triple your speaker fee for today. I'm going to triple your speaker fee here for today. So your honorarium is triple, Ruth. I'm, I'm sure our managers will have no issue with that. Oh, send us the bell. <laughs> That's so, so, so nice of you, right? All right, listen, let, let's be serious here. There's a couple of things that we want to do right as we close. First of all, we're going to go ahead and ask, the team to push our survey link out. And so, Rebecca, if you, if you would take the courtesy of doing that, and scholars, you'll see that pop up on your screen. should just take you directly over to SurveyMonkey. Give us feedback. We always love to, to get these items uh, shared because this gives us a chance to, uh, to, to the impact of the things that are going on. Please note, for anyone that's joining within uh, certain areas, you may have SurveyMonkey blocked if by, if by chance that's the case. You can certainly send us an email or give us feedback in another format or maybe pull it up from your, from your personal device. Listen, let's talk about what's next because we've got one down, Timo. We've got 11 to go. We'll be back with you next month for our always exciting discussion around a uh, pad, excuse me, charting a path to graduate school. We're going to have representatives on from the legal profession, folks that are in the science and technology space and the nursing space and folks that have gotten MBAs and folks that have been able to self-fund their graduate level experiences. So do not miss that 90-minute presentation coming up with us during February. In March, one-two punch with a discussion around resume writing, so tips on creating a rock-solid resume, and then also preparing for success in your job interview. Great, great topics here. Would encourage folks to immediately get registered for each of those. April is Teach Children to Save Month. Great discussions here. We'll be excited to partner with our friends over in the hands-on banking team uh, and then connecting in with our, our pillar socially around financial health and financial wellness. Uh, so join us there for tips on saving, investing, and a path to home ownership. Always a really, really exciting session. In May, our focus will be around entrepreneurship and the gig economy. This is one is always a very, very big hit with us. All right, and then on the next slide, you'll see some of the details about our kind of second half of the year with programming. So our discussion, I think the schedule is here for June. Yep is tied into defining and building a strong leadership brand. In July, if there's one to circle team, this is the one. This is our Wells Fargo careers and internships discussion. Please note, in the past, this has been in October, excuse me, has been in August. We have moved this one up by a couple of days, scholars, to give you access. I'd love for us to have a 1,000 or so students registered for that one. So please, please, please register for that career and internship discussion. A lot of great information there. Salary versus value. How do you make sure that, you've, uh, you know, that you're earning everything that you can in the career field that you're considering? Come and hear firsthand from our, from our partners relative to that discussion. We'll also in September talk about success strategies for managing student debt. We have great partners in our education financial services team that will be coming to deliver that presentation so you can hear about the things you need to be thinking about relative to managing any of your student debt. October, get part about credit month all about building responsible credit and why credit matters. You will leave this call or that webinar with information to help you build your credit and to understand why it's important to maintain it and some of the good benefits there. And then we'll end the year with one of our favorite topics, 
uh, around uh, the digital natives, so uh, social media smarts. Many of you all may be familiar with that term, and scholars, lots of you all on the lines are absolutely considered digital natives as you've had technology with you your entire lives. And so come here firsthand some of the things that you need to be thinking about and, candidly, some things that you need to balance through and be very careful of relative to your digital footprint. With that said, some final reminders here on the next couple of slides. Just remember, and we've got a couple of notes around this, in the next 72 hours, we will send you back an email with the playback details. You can use that. You can share that. Pass that along to other classmates or other folks in your sports teams or, or in other organizations or clubs that couldn't join today. And go ahead and use the hashtag for us, WFC Beyond College. This is just a way for us to keep track of, of what you all are saying and then also to get feedback from you. So please, share the information as that comes across for you. Please note, when you listen to the playback, you will need to reference the password that's on the screen. I never read it, but you'll see it's referenced there. You will need to use that password every time you log in or any time you want to access playback for any of the sessions that we've delivered. Final slides here. Again, just that reminder relative to our, to our survey monthly link, please just go ahead and take a minute and, and fill that survey out for us. We're very interested in your feedback, and just know that we're able to use that as we continue to build out the next phases of things that we're going to do. And on the last slide, you'll see our reminders here for our next call. We look forward to having you with us here in a couple of weeks for our discussion on February the 20th on charting a path to graduate school, what to know before you go. We'll be excited to have some great partners on to share a little bit of their journey and give you some inroads, whether you're a freshman and you're considering law school or whether you're a junior or senior that's thinking about what you want to do once you graduate. Come to this call, get information, and please share it with others. I, again, want to thank Ruth, Katie. also want to thank Mary and Karen, who are in the background. <laughs> Today you didn't hear their voices on the call, but they added great value with us, too. So, Karen and Mary, thank you so much. Ruth and Katie, an another home run from you all. And just excited about our entire series. We've got one down team and, and 11 more to go. Rebecca, with that said, we'll hand the reins over to you. Certainly want to thank you again for your assistance today. And Rebecca, we'll let you close us out from here. <laughs> Thanks to all of our participants for joining us today. This concludes our webcast, and you may now disconnect. Have a good day.